Hello and welcome back to this third and final session of today's demonstration. Again, we've got a studio audience. Say hello, studio audience. Oh, sorry. Hello. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, chance to complete this painting. And actually, the bits that I did earlier and I was struggling with because I was overthinking, actually look really nice. One thing I am going to do is I'm just going to have a little palette clean because I'm going to use different colours and I've got no more space. And this is why I like this china palette. You can just easily clean. Just give myself a little bit of a clean area because I want now to go into the iris. So I need some clean blues. That was easy. So using, I'm going to work my way down now because I was getting really overwhelmed with the amount of detail or what I was putting in. And like I say, once it's dried, it actually looks a lot better than I thought. So I'm going to mix. The paint's been on my palette all day, so now it's dried up. But the great thing about watercolour is you can be wet and just work into. And I've actually managed to keep that glass of water clean because I'm not being near it. <laughs> So that's the way to keep the water clean, is don't go near it. But so this permanent rose, so ultramarine, permanent rose, lemon yellow, really good primary colours. Um, the permanent rose is a pink red, but actually gives you lovely violets, lovely purples. And mixed with the yellow, gives some really good oranges. Whereas if you used a colour like a cadmium, you can get purples and oranges, but they're not as bright, especially with that really bright yellow. So mixing, colour mixing with red, yellow, blue, absolutely. But it does depend on the red, yellow, blue, the, the colours you get. So put a bit of red to one side and a bit of blue because I want a much more blue red. And just mix it in and see um, whether the colour works. No, still too red. So add a little bit more blue. It's better. And I'm not, you'll see there that I'm not overly mixing because I quite like when some of the red pigment pings through. I'm, what I'm looking for is that wet, thin layer. That's better. So just add more water. Okay, so I'm going to go around the edge. This is actually a dream to paint because it's not too much to do. But I'm going to do different layers of colour. What I'm also going to do is try and think about what's happening. So I know I've sketched down, but I do know this area doesn't make sense. So you may sketch down but it doesn't mean that you keep um, all the lines or they make sense when you look at them again. So I'm still referring back to the original. So this leaf curls, curls round. So I've lost something here. That one curls up that way, curls round there, okay? So just trying to see what's happening on both the original and the drawing. Again, it doesn't matter too much because no one's seen the original. But it, I'd like it to look a little like, I remember it's called an iris, not a lily. So, a bit, bit of more red than blue in this side, but it actually doesn't matter. What I want to make sure is it's at the end when I get the shadow and the light. So this is quite dark and you've got a nice colour line coming up there. And you'll see, I'm just literally seeing what I pick up on my brush. This is just 
to me, this is a first layer, but it's also a thinking layer. It's just, I'm planning, I'm trying to decide where I'm going with it. Okay, so what's happening in here? Now, I didn't understand what this bit here was. I can see it on the photo, but I couldn't work out what it was, which is why I have Googled and looked up the bearded iris, which this is, and that apparently is um, the bit where it gets its name from. That's the beard. So I couldn't see it. I, well, it didn't make sense. So Googling and getting a little bit of information helped make sense, which will help th with what I paint. I now know, right, so this goes round here. I now know what that bit is. So I, I could either disguise it, leave it out, but actually it's a key feature of this plant, so I will make sure that it shows. So the lily, no, I've done it again, the yeah, iris. Um, curls round here, so the lines go in the, the different direction. Have you got any iris facts for us? Uh, I thought I'd done some iris fact, but the one last iris fact I have is that there's about 250 different species. And I was looking, when I was trying to identify this one, there were so many different colours and varieties. It was amazing. There are summer plants and they like dry soil. But other than that, um, there's not a huge amount of information. Do you know where irises get their name from? No, actually, I didn't see that. Oh, according to uh, Google, uh, irises are named after Iris, the goddess of the rainbow in ancient Greek mythology. I didn't know that. And that no. didn't see in any of the searches. I it's no I the number one fact, apparently, about irises. Well, OK, I missed that one. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, no, I didn't know that. All I know is it's got a beard, and that's the beardy bit. Which I thought it was the fla the leaves that fell down, which are called fall. But it's not. So I thought that was my best fact. So we're looking at... So that flips over <coughs> here. Go on then. Uh, what colour uh, do irises not swim in? Black. Uh, well, uh, uh, I don't know. Don't know about <laughs> Sorry. It says uh, red. There are no bright red irises. They get dark brown red, but they don't come in bright red. Like I say, there was such a variety. Really. And they come in about three different sizes. Um, it was, it was difficult to try and identify. I think they should label all flowers in your flower bed. Then you know what you're looking at. It'd be much easier for me. All right. Okay, this is lovely. Ultrarine blue. Apparently, this is a... It looks very blue on there, but it's violet colour. And that's why I think it is called bold print but there were a lot that looked very similar. So I'm not totally sure which plant it is or which different type it is. So I'm looking, this is really quite dark, but the ultramarine is a perfect blue for this. It's great not having to mix a colour. Does it grow in watercolour? It's a watercolour, so yes it does, which is why this area I was working on previously and I was really struggling and I kept, I lifted it back off and now it's dried, it actually looks really good. So this is why, and I know I'm constantly saying it and I've had the luxury of being able to do it, walk away. If you're just going, it's not working, don't understand it, don't know what I'm doing, walk away. And actually when you come back, it suddenly kind of makes a little bit more sense. So I need to finish this one off. So this is quite, I want that <coughs> light colour. I quite like that, I'll use that. 
So not being overly slavish to the colour, because this is actually a, there's another beard there, a first layer. And look at the wonderful colours that are coming out from, the original photograph looks quite one colour, but this is where as an artist you can just bring out colours which you know, really work. So I'm working my way around. Right, that flips over here and flips under here. So obviously picked up a little bit more blue. Still very samey at the moment all the way around. I can go over that when I start to bring everything together. At the moment I'm just trying to plot and decide where things are. Okay, so I have another beard here, which uh, did tell me what they were for, but I've forgotten. And like I say, by Googling it, and I've looked up and worked out what bits work and what how they work. So the three falls, the three standards that s sit upright. It just means I can understand it a little bit better. So darker under here. And because I haven't mixed the colours completely, I've still got that lovely red coming through. Okay, now going for the stronger colour. I'm going to work my way round again. No, actually, I'm going to... I keep forgetting these bits, so let's do it while I've got colour on my brush. So... We've got the edge here, and then it flips around, but it's not yet got its colour, so we need to be quite delicate, and it doesn't go up any further than there, so the colour is coming from the bottom. Still using this bigger brush which I started off with and I did say I probably wouldn't change brushes and I don't think I will need to because I'm still getting that lovely fine line. I'm not going for the detail quite yet, I will bring that back just making sure it makes sense. And see if I can. I forgot I haven't got a tissue in my hand. This is why my hands get covered, because I forget to hold one. Right, this one again hasn't quite got all the colour yet. It's just making sure I pick up the edge. That's pretty much all that's working on that one. Right, so now for another layer, because hopefully that's dried much stronger, more pigment. Try and get it a little bluer. So now I can start to bring the detail. And you see how that's dried from that original colour. It's given me a nice light layer. And now I can just start to darken. So I mean, this is where I can bring back any of that detail that I had lost nice sharp edges because this is the focal point and I can bring out the lines and you'll see how they work really nicely with that lovely layer underneath. I haven't put the shadow in yet. I will do that at the end because if I put it in now, it, it won't work. So sometimes you just need to just try and to work out what's going on. So detail at the end. Right, so this flips over here. So dash and dot around the edge. Bring it down into there. Might be just a bit stronger. I do know this is going to drop down a tone. Make sure 
so I'll just follow the shape round with very slight bits of detail on this edge, dashes and dots. Um, that's a flick, so here I've got that furry beard and a lot more detail right through to the edge. So I can bring this through again, just using the tip and the edge of the brush, just to bring detail in. That's a bit too light, so let's... What I am trying to do is try and still keep some of the light. Okay. And I can always come back and to work my way around. Some detail in there. So it falls. And I think it actually is a bit green. dark this is where you have to really play with how much color you put on because I still want to keep the light areas but just following that leaf round I'll put those little dashes and details on in a moment Shadows and shadow there. Let's move on. I can see there's much deeper, darker colours coming in here. Finer. Okay, this goes round. I've lost a few folds. Maybe that doesn't really matter. actually was useful to look at the screen then because this doesn't completely work it's too even it can be just a dash or a dot and you don't have that luxury at home but what you do have is your ability to walk away and come back okay fine just twist your brush as you use it What's really hard is to create the effect without it being too even, but also it has kind of a specific look. So the edge is easy. That's a nice, sharp, dark line. So work with that. Just look at the way the lines then fall over the fold. So I've lost this flip up. Don't know if it's worth putting it back. It isn't. So I'll leave it. People aren't looking at the original. So it, it has a, a fold here, but I'm not completely sure where that is. So I just won't put it in. You've still got a fold over. dots do as I go along. I think that lovely violet I put on to start with actually works. Just gives that extra bit of value. Comes around here. And flips over. Yeah. It's quite nice because actually Normally, you wouldn't look at creating an outline, but with this, it's already done it for you because in nature, it has a, a lovely outline. This needs to be darker. And I need to explain what's going on in there. So oh, the lines are here.
still using this bigger brush. Like I say, it's amazing what, how much detail you can get from a brush that most people wouldn't pick up. They would start with a tiny brush, actually, because it's quite easy to get detail you're looking for with this brush. I'm just using the colour I've got on my brush to add shadow. So that's taken that back because it's where the it's folded over. What's difficult with a white flower is getting all the colour in without getting too much colour on. Okay, let's go round. So now that's folded over, we've got the edge here. Down there's a lot more detail than I can I'm putting on at this stage. I'll see how long I've got. Just before we finish. Probably got about ten minutes. <laughs> okay, I better hurry up. Right, let's go round. So I've got a flick here, it's folded over. So like I say, even though I do have the lines on the page, I'm looking at the original for support and shape. That's me darting around. Sorry, Gary. Right. Stinking. I kind of use this kind of stage with like um, a sketch. That's sketchy marks. It's quite great if the tool does the job for you, which this is. That doesn't make sense. Let's alter it. Following the lines. And I think without that initial violet colour, it wouldn't have had quite as much impact. It's darker under here. It's quite dark in there. So it's coming down into. the flower head here and the lines I had didn't make sense they were wrong but now I can correct as I go along nice edge here this is quite a little bit more delicate not quite as many so it's a nice fold here see if I can bring that back fold over round not as solid as some of the others, so I keep it quite light. And again, I've not yet put the shadow on, and that sometimes makes it ping together. And the beard lines come out like this. So again, following the form of the flower. And that's how you can get away with a lot by just going in the direction you see. And often the, it does it for you. Okay, so this bit. All right, so now I'm into detail. One area that is bugging me is I've put too many lines here. Oh, I can take that out. This is great paper for correcting. It's Saunders Waterford. It takes all this. Um abuse. Like I said in the previous session, you can wash it down and wash it back off if you have to. Right, shadow. Oh, 
great thing about shadow is it's quite specific. So the shapes it makes are not as soft or as random as you have and you've used in the background. So it's quite shadowy. Looks harsh at the moment. I do know this will drop down. Got a shadow here. Got a shadow in the fold. This needs to drop down back. So drop back into that. And now I can work on this. How long, Gary? Oh, five minutes. Oh, okay. Let's see what if I can push this along. I normally work quite quickly, but I've just had a bit of luxury in being able to take my time. And I've probably taken a little bit too much time. Yeah, that lines. Okay, this bit in the middle. Let's see what's happening here. I'm just going to drop the light bit I can see around it. Ultramarine, shadow on this side, mix it on the page. That means that needs something in the middle there. So this is how you can try and understand what's going on. Yellow ochre, which was the colour I used in the layer here, and that makes sense now. And let's see if I can add a little bit more detail before we've got to finish. So now this is dry, I'm able to make those sharper folds and lines. Trying to make a little bit more sense of what you're seeing. Okay, we've got some lovely details. Like I say, if you've got hours, you can continue to put these details on. Still with the big brush, just. I was losing the point, so I just needed to wet. So when I was losing the point with these sable brushes, it can be that it's not wet enough. Okay, I think that's about it. There's lots of areas I'd like to continue and fix. Um, but good chance to stop, walk away. Um, so that was a three-part demo, which is unusual. I'm with a studio audience, and I hope you enjoyed that. Um, join us later in the week for a live workshop with Lisa Ann Watkins, which is Coloured Pencils, and that's bye from me and bye from this audience. Bye. Bye.